So we are now joined by Kevin Harvick, driver of the number four Bush Light Chevrolet for Stuart Haas Racing. Kevin won the All-Star Race in 2007 and has finished runner-up in each of the last two All-Star events. So Kevin, just talk a little bit about your outlook for this weekend. Well, I think obviously we're, we're obviously excited to, um, to be in the All-Star Race. And, and I think when you look at this particular weekend, there's obviously a lot on the line, but there really isn't. You know, it's really just a race to go out and try to perform well and, and try to win a race. So, um, so it's a lot of fun to, uh, to see the changes in the, in the uh, format and, and the way that things have uh, evolved and changed. And, and to see the, the new format is something I think we're all excited to see how it pans out. So looking forward to hopefully uh, being on the racetrack at, at some point, but um, you know, just excited about the weekend. Okay, we will now open it up for questions for Kevin. Please raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. We'll start down here with Jeff. Jeff Clark from USA Today. Um, Kevin, how much have you looked at the strategy for the race? And I mean, I'm sure it depends a lot on the tires and how much they're going to wear, but how do you see that final segment unfolding? Like, Kenseth was saying that he thinks it's going to be a race for 12, so everybody can have a, a preferred track position but do you see it like that yeah well I, I you know I don't I don't I think a lot of that depends on what happens in practice obviously I think it's going to be you know a fairly cool uh, temperature race so that that really isn't the most the thing that you want to see the most when there's when there's strategy going to be played out and, and you want to see fall off and you want to see two tires work uh, last year two tires were were pretty tough to to make work and, and pretty tough to uh, um, you know to, to make up ground because the cars were just so fast and everybody had a fair amount of grip so you know I think that the strategy is is going to be how much fall off are actually in the tires how much do the cars slow down um, you know can you run the middle groove uh, and keep pace with the bottom groove uh, when you're on new tires and, and that was really where we were last year um, you know we could run the middle groove but as soon as Denny moved up you know the the front of the car went away and, and we weren't able to, to make up ground anymore so it's definitely uh, practice is important to see where all the fall off and things are going to be to, to analyze that 100 percent I just can't make I just it's hard for me to wrap my arms around the fact that I'm going to race for 12th I think you know I think <laughs> Um, I think for me, I think I'd rather be, you know, I think if you have a 9, 10, or 11, I'd rather be first and try to be on the outside of, or, you know, some, the first row of, of cars on new tires. So, um, I don't know, you know, it's just a, against the grain and, and there's a lot of thought that has to go into it because there is strategy that, that plays into it. Um, so I think if you're going to win the race, you're going to have to kind of guess at what the right strategy is. And you're also going to have to get lucky because you're going to have to come off pit road. Um, you know, if that's the strategy that seems like the common strategy, then, the, you know, the, the, the common theme is usually not just one guy that's, that's thinking about it. So um, there's a lot of thought that, that's going into it, which kind of makes it fun. We'll take our next question from Tom and then go over to Lee. Hey, Kevin. Tom Jensen, FoxSports.com. Congratulations on your news this week. How important was that to get that wrapped up early in the season, and how good does it feel to have long-term security and a long-term deal in place? I was hoping that we were going to get all this out of the way today so that we don't have to talk about it for, for several more years again. Um, you know, I, I think as you as you sit back and, and you see all the things that that happened at the beginning of the year and i'll kind of give you guys a little more background on how all this went you know for, for me i had an automatic you know two-year extension that that the team held um which everybody was understood that that we were going to extend that option but i think as you stood back and look at it there was a lot of things that, that changed in the sport uh, within our team uh, we had a lot of sponsorship things that, that wanted to do things further than really where we were so we sat back and said okay well you know let's m mutually agree just to you know forget that contract and let's restructure everything and I think anytime somebody hears the word restructure within somehow within an organization or within a team um, it was a mutually agreed restructure to extend the contract and make it go further so that we could extend our sponsorships and extend our relationships that we had to, to make them longer um, you know and I actually you know, you hear the, the scuttlebutt, um, you know, it affects the guys in the shop a lot more than it affects me. Um, I think it's 
kind of fun, to be honest with you, because I think a lot of you guys have, have gone through a lot of the things that, that we go through as drivers when you see somebody say something that you take offense to and uh, seeing the internal squabbles between a lot of you guys kind of reminds me of putting us in situations. So I think there's a lot that, that can be learned uh, through this particular situation. But I think as you, as you look back and, and you know, it got so out of control, um, I actually went to Casey Kane and I said, look, man, here's what's going on. And I told him, I said, you know, there's not been one person that's called me from your organization. I want you to have the trust in your team. I want you to believe in your team and I want you to, you know, keep working on the things that you're working on, but here's where it's at. Here's what I'm doing. Here's what I see. Here's how it's going to go. And, you know, here we are up until, up until last week, um, you know, it's still, still running around. So, and I think for, for, for me, you know, you look at, you look at things and, and you say, well, you can only say so much um, before you start crossing lines of, of putting things into uh, legal responsibilities and, and treading lightly on what you can and can't say. So, you know, you put yourself in that position and I, I tried to be as upfront as I could with you guys to, to tell you uh, exactly what was going on. But um, so it's all all been great um, with the management at SHR, you know, never, never even uh, worried about having to take phone calls or place phone calls or put your put our team in in, in a position to to go out and my personal team to, to in a position to go out and talk to other people that was never the case it was just you know extending an extension that that needed to be put in place because in the end it's like i've said several times you know i feel like i've got the best crew chief in the garage um our team's you know been performing well and doing the things that they need to do and and um you know i like the the challenges that that face us in the future that motivates me um, you know to have those things in place and and so it's all been all been good it's just been um you know some some crazy rumors that that just however they got started they got started We'll take our next question from Lee, and then come over to Kenny, and then back to Jim. <clears throat> Lee Spencer Motorsport .com. Two questions. First of all, um, you know, with the extension, did some of that have to do with all the restructuring going on, as far as um, you know, what NASCAR's done with the the driver payment, the contracts, and you know, we don't see what the purses are, and the purses have been redistributed, and so I would imagine that those percentages have changed. I would. I would. I would tell you yes that's probably what originally started all the conversations and, and things snowballed from there into well let's just make this better since we're going to have to work on one portion let's just get rid of the whole thing and start over and and just make it all right so it's all right going forward and and everybody's everybody's on the same page but that's definitely what started the conversations thank you and and secondly kind of feel for the struggles you've had on pit road because you know when and we hear this from the fans a lot that um you're like the the great hope to go against the toyota cars and then you're in a situation like you were at dover last week first pit box no excuse in the world why you shouldn't be the first guy out uh, on pit yeah. road and um it just really seems that um, it, it's been a struggle. Have you guys addressed that in team meetings this week? And do you think that things are going to be better going forward? Well, I, I think it's been addressed too much. And I think we put our guys in a, in a bad spot because, look, these, these guys have won two championships. They've won races with Tony. They've won races with me. Um, you know, some of the things that you don't see, and Jackman was out the first several weeks and, you know, had some, some injuries and, and had to get those, you know, repaired and, and fixed. And, and so we had some, some curve balls that, that were thrown to us at the beginning of the season. Um, you know, obviously they've been trying to, to do things differently with, with formations and, and pit guns. And, um, you know, the last stop of the last week was just, let's just go back to normal after we crashed. You know, they had a 11.3 second pit stop and, and those guys, they don't they don't have anything to prove to anybody and i think from a management crew chief organizational standpoint we've kind of put them in a bad spot from trying to throw too many things at them and when they when we just let them naturally do their job especially especially now that it's back to five lug nuts that's that's really what those guys were um, brought up doing so you know it's it's just like the cars you have to experiment you have to try you have to put those guys you know out there and, and unfortunately you know they're getting a, a little bit of a bad rap for a lot of situations that they've been put in so we had some some great meetings this week and you don't forget how to do those things um, you know they did it just how they needed to do it last week and and just getting getting them some some constant um, consistency is is 
that's really what 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 we need to we need to put them in an environment that can do that and not just keep throwing things at it and, and keep trying to uh, make things better. Just take the consistency and, and they've got the speed and it shows up when when you need to. So it's really you know it shows up bad on paper and it looks bad on TV. But you know I, I don't think that I don't think that's going to be a problem. I think we just need to get them back to their their normal environment with five five on five off, um, which which it hasn't been. And you know as as long as the rules are officiated, which you know are still questionable, um, you know last week as to everybody putting five on and five off, I, I feel good about it. Okay, we'll go next to Kenny and then Jim and then come over to Jenna. Kenny Bruce with NASCAR.com. Yeah, the pit stop question was pretty much what I was wanting to know if, if you guys had talked about, but. When, when you're on the track competing and you come off pit road and you've lost positions, how does that affect you from, from a personal standpoint? What kind of shape does it put you in going back to a restart? Uh, it doesn't affect me like it used to. You know, these, these are not new problems. You know, I think these are problems that are, you're going to have pit road problems. You're going to have performance problems. You're going to have, you're just going to have things that you, that you have to adapt to. And I think, you know, the performance of the race cars has, has been so good over three years that, you know, you make those comebacks and finish second, third, fourth, and, and has masked and does and, and continues to mask a lot of the problems, which is which is a good thing. So, you know, you see a lot of people that, that have problems with their cars or have problems on pit road and don't recover, but our cars are fast enough to where we recover. Uh, we just, you know, we didn't we didn't recover enough, you know, last week and in in a couple of the other weeks. So, it's not something that that you let tear the team down. It's just something that you that you fix and and you know you you and believe in the in the core nucleus of of the team, uh, on the pit crew and in knowing that they've been there before and and you just support them and and um, you know put the pieces back together because it's so easy to you know to unplug something and pull pieces and parts out of, out of situations. And they just unfold fast, um, you know. So I think if there wasn't, you know, for experiencing situations like this before, and, and it used to eat me up. But you know, at that particular point, you know, that part of it didn't go well, and, and you know, somebody has to pick up the slack, and, and you do the best you can in, in the car to, to to pick up the pieces and, and move forward. So it's um, it's an ever moving target. You know, once you get this one fixed, it'll be a new target and, and we'll move to something else. So, you know, I feel I feel good. I, I don't feel like we've put everything together uh, all the way through the first part of the season. All the pieces have performed well at, at one point or another and, and they're all there. It's just a matter of getting them all in sync. Next question from Jim. Jim Hutter, Motorsport.com. You have talked in the past how important it is for you to be around as Keelan gets older and take part in and his thing, activities, or whatever he decides to do. Have you given any thought as to whether this long-term deal may be your last, or have you kept that kind of open-ended for now? Uh, most everything we do is in four or five year chunks. So, you know, it's, it's really, you know, until you get to this particular point in the last year of, of the deal, it's really not something that you, that you really evaluate until then. I, I try to, we try to, Glenn and I, and everybody on our team tries to put as many things to bed as possible so that you know our goal was is to always focus on being good parents and and, and trying to do the best we can on on sundays or saturday nights in, in this particular case so um you know we Dwayne and i talked about where we wanted to be and and we set the set the goals of of how we were going to do things for the next several years and and we'll um you know we'll address those things then but i'm just not you know you hear you hear too many guys uh, talk about retiring too soon, and, and you watch Mark do it into his into his mid 50s. So I, I'm not going to sit up here and say, "Well, I need to I need to retire at this particular age. I'm going to quit when I feel like I'm not having fun anymore or not competitive." So it's way too much fun right now being competitive and having fast cars, and and you know you feel like you're making up for for a little bit of lost time uh, at the beginning. So it's it's been fun to to kind of have that re rejuvenated last three years and, and really be excited about it and, and, and love uh, being a part of the team and the organization and all the things that, that come with what we have right now. So it's just it's just a lot of fun and it's going to have to it'll have to it'll have to be pretty painful for me at that at the end of this one to, to just say I'm done because you know I'm still being my you know my mid 40s. So um, Mark's Mark's still sitting out there in his, his mid 50s. So I'm not going to I'm not going to commit to quit before it's too soon. <laughs> Go ahead, Jenna. Jennifer, AP. Kevin, um, under this contract extension, will there be opportunities for you to race Xfinity? Um, I don't. I don't really have any plans 
you know, to race Xfinity, I don't really want to race more than a handful of them anyway. If I do, um, I would say five would, would probably be the number, and, and I'm going to want to race them at the tracks I want to race them at. Um, but I, I would like to race, you know, a handful of them, but I'm not going to do it in a situation that, that I don't enjoy or want to be a part of. And um, so, you know, I, I will do a three to five if, if the right opportunity is there. But, um, you know, we've just had a lot to work on right now. So it's, it's been on the radar, but it hasn't been 100% detailed out yet. Okay, we'll take a question over here on the left and then go to Bob, then Dustin. Yeah, Hill Overton, WIXC Radio. Kevin, right here to your left. How you doing? Uh, I think it's great that you addressed the issue about driver replacement with Casey because that was the big rumor that you were going to the five next year. I know the Chevy fans have perpetuated this. They wanted to keep you in their fold, rightfully so. But that shows you had your mind on it and you wanted to relieve him of the stress of it. Do, do you in your own heart feel that this has had any distraction, played any role in your driving at all? I don't think so. Not, not from my part. I think it's probably distracted the shop and, and you know, you know the guys on the, on the team a lot more than it has me. Um, I don't mind getting in the middle of, of some of these games. And we really, at this particular point, weren't even really trying to play a game. But unfortunately, it, it kind of turned into, you know, just a, you know, just a spiraling out of control rumor. But, you know, I, I felt like that was important. I felt like I had a good relationship with Casey. Um, you know, I felt like it was important for him to know where his organization stood and, and, and the talks and situations that, that had been there, um, you know, weren't even, were never even, never even talked about. So I thought that was important for him to know. And that, that was probably two, two and a half months ago, uh, you know, that, that, we, that I had that conversation with him. So I just, I felt like that was important because I knew that they were, there was a lot of pressure uh, on, on that particular side of things to, to get, where they have been, where, where they're performing better and, and doing the things that they're doing on the racetrack. So I just, I just felt like that was important. Okay, go ahead, question from Bob. Uh, Bob Parker, ESPN. There've been a lot of kind of tweaks to the rules the last few weeks, uh, brake ducts, um, truck arms, you've got the fan rules. Um, do you feel like any of those rules are designed to bring you and the Gibbs guys kind of back to the pack at all? And, do you, and or do you think it will have any impact in bringing the field closer to you? I like a lot of those rules just in a direct uh, effect of the driver council and, and NASCAR meeting. Um, you know, I think from a council standpoint, we're, we're, all, we're all pushing, and I think, you know, the drivers in the garage are, are pushing with us to, you know, to, to try to keep the, the downforce off the cars. The teams are just rapidly gaining uh, on the downforce and side force. Uh, you know, I think everybody wants to see that reduced. I think this is the first step, and, and in that process, you know, it's kind of an efficiency process to, to help development and cost and, and things that, that go with really expensive fans, uh, seeing what a little bit less skew will, will do. And then I think, you, you know, you obviously have seen the lesser downforce package that, that they tested at, at Michigan. Uh, in the same direction with, with some good results. So those are just direct effects of, of the meetings and, and things that, that um, you know, the, the council and, um, had, had pushed really hard with NASCAR to, to, to try to just at least take a step for the, for the all-star race and then take another step um, you know, as, as we have with the teams and NASCAR moving forward. Okay, next question from Dustin and then David Scott. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. I actually have two questions. One, you mentioned the Drivers' Council. It, obviously, the, the council turns like one year old here coming up in the next week or two. Looking back at its first year, with what you've been able to do and, and accomplish, has, is it, has it surprised you what you guys have done? Because obviously this is something brand new for the sport, just kind of the impact it's had in a year. And a second question. Well, I think as, as you look at the, the first half of the, the first term, um, I think we were all just trying to figure out what was actually happening, uh, how it was going to be structured. And I think as, as you look at the second uh, half of the first term, I think things started to happen. Um, and this year, everybody knew that we needed to, you know, to start pushing harder. And, and as a group, um, you know, some of the processes needed to, to be different in how we approach things uh, with, with the teams and NASCAR. And, and I think everybody's communicated really well, um, you know, with whether it's, uh, you know, 
with the group texts or the meetings or whatever the case may be that there's a lot of communication after really every race and, and even during the week as to as the things that are going on and, and constant chatter of of things we need to work on as as they evolve so it's been it's been a lot more effective than than i thought it would be it's evolved into you know to, to more committees and, and meetings and, and things that, that uh, happen with nascar and, and the different groups of tracks and uh, things like that so it's been very effective and I think as, as you see all this stuff building up it just keeps getting better and better and we're able to just keep chopping things off the off the block of, of um, you know really little things that you that people may not even know about um, you know I think one great example this week is, is the is the kids autograph section that that's is, is going to be in place at, at the racetrack that all the drivers know about they know where it's at and it's kids only and I think from a driver standpoint just making those interactions and, and different things uh, you know available and, and, and known about are, are really steps in the right direction to make the experience better for the for the competitors but make the experiences in those types of situations better for the fans and the second question is, is a on the track question obviously last week at, at Dover we saw NASCAR really kind of you know clamp down on the restarts it really seemed to be really stringent on that after admitting a while back that they'd missed one. With how it, that the restart process has evolved, you've started on the, on, on the front row, how has that affected the gamesmanship in, in, in what, what's going on and what's not going on now? Uh, I'm sure there still is some of that, but how has that game played with now seemingly NASCAR being a little more tighter on at least in the last week or two? Yeah, competitors, as competitors, we, we just, it, that's, a, that's a pretty black and white you know call and i think that you know they probably didn't view it as that until we were like look we just we need we need it just needs to be black and white you're either you're either good or you're bad especially on the original start because when i started in the sport in a rookie meeting that was the first thing they tell you if you're on the front row the, the second place car does not beat the leader of the line ever spinning tires no matter what and, and those are just um, the leader has earned the right to be the leader and we went to double file restarts and and we all feel like it's important that the leader has that advantage to, to be able to keep the lead of the race and, and let everybody else race. Um, so the leader's in control more. Um, you know, I think you, you see the leader have an advantage more on the restarts, which he's earned, whether it's on pit road or on the racetrack, uh, to do the things that, that he did to, to earn the lead and, and, and do what he wants to do on the restart. So I think there's been, there's definitely been less gamesmanship. And I think that just those calls just being firm and sticking to them and, and um, you know, has helped everybody realize that they aren't messing around, which is good. David Scott from the Charlotte Observer. Kevin, Stuart Haas's change over to Ford, what kind of influence, if any, or impact did that have on your decision to sign the extension? Um, I'm just happy to race to the end of the year and, and be competitive right now and, and worry about the things that, that, that we have uh, in front of us. So um, we'll worry about all that stuff when we, when we get to, to the end of the year. Kevin, thank you so much for coming in today. Good luck this weekend.